In this video, we're going to talk about gradient descent. Let's start with um, what is actually happening in neural network. So for example, we have some data and our data is going to be a square. And then I have a circle here and I have a rectangle here. I want to gather as much information about these as possible. Like for example, their location their shape, or maybe their color. Right now, we don't have the color here, but um, these are the things that we want to figure out about this data. So for that, I'm going to put three neurons around this so they can examine and get, gather, as much information, gather as much information as they can from these three. Or uh, we can say features, like figure out the features that these three data points have. First, when I start, I just randomly put neurons around it. So for example, I will put a neuron here, and then I will put a neuron here, and I put a neuron here. Right now, we're get, we want to get information about this circle. These neurons, every, each, one, um, each one of these neurons are looking at this circle from a certain angle. Each one of them are gathering information. Like for example, this one knows that the circle is going to be above triangle. And um, this neuron knows that the circle is going to be beside the rectangle, but it's not able to see the triangle. So these two neurons have different information about this circle. And then this neuron can't even see the circle. So it has no information about the circle. Now imagine these three neurons want to figure out where the circle is exactly located, okay? And the ultimate result that they come up with, they would figure out, they would say, okay, the circle is here. So this is what they predicted. This is where the actual circle is. This is where they predicted. So these neurons made prediction and they actually saw the circle here, which is not the correct. There is a distance between these two. There is a distance between these two circles. Okay, so that is the amount of error that they made. Instead of having circle here, they have the circle here. So this is the amount of mistake that they made. Another thing to keep in mind is that some of these neurons made more mistake than the other one. So for example, this neuron knew that the triangle have to be, a, a, knew that the this neuron knew that the circle is supposed to be above triangle. The circle is above triangle, so it predicted correctly. It seems like it seems like the mistake didn't mainly come from this neuron, from what this neuron was able to see, but it's mostly coming from this neuron. So this it seems like this neuron made the most amount of mistake and this neuron wasn't even able to see where the circle is. And one of the ways that we are solving this problem in neural network is by moving these neurons around. So when you're moving these neurons around, they are able to see the data from different angles. And when they are seeing the data from different angles, they can get more information or they can be more accurate. Like for example, like for example, maybe if this neuron moves a little bit this way, then it is able to see the difference between square and uh, circle better. Maybe from that area, like for example, let's just change this. Imagine that this circle was here. This neuron was here, so it wasn't able to see the relationship between circle and uh, rectangle very well. So, but then when we moved it a little bit further down, now it sees, oh yeah, there is actually a lot of distance between the square and circle. The circle is not above, the circle is not actually above the square, but there is a distance between them. So the neuron was able to see that when it moved a little bit further down, okay? So it is important for us to move the neurons around and that way they can see the data better. And some of them are, some, and some of them you need to move them more, some of them there is no reason to move, and some of them you don't even know where to move because they can't even see the circle. 
this movement this movement in neural network called weights so whenever you're changing the weights it's just like you're moving these neurons around to see data from different angle and some of them have to move more than the others some of them I, I, you just don't know because they can't see the data at that point so now what is the role of gradient descent in all of this so gradient descent is going to figure out how much mistake has happened here how should it's going to figure out how should these neurons change their weights so we reduce the amount of error and get the correct answer and the way that gradient descent is going to behave, it depends on the activation function and the loss function. Now let's see what we are talking about here. If I have this graph, um, I have my loss here and I have my weights here. Okay? And then my graphs look like this. Obviously, I want to be at the lowest point. So for example, this is when the weight is three. Obviously, I want to be at the lowest point because I want my loss to be as minimum as possible. I want my circle to be closer to where it actually is. And that's what's happening here. I have this graph that shows that whenever these neurons move around, how does my loss change? Like when I move around these neurons, how close these two circles are getting together. So what gradient descent is, gradient is just a derivative. Descent means when you're going down. So gradient is just basically the slope at that point. So right now, my slope is going to be something like this. And then here, it seems like if the neuron moves a little bit further down, it's going to have a better prediction. It's going to be able to have a better uh, understanding of the position between circle and uh, the square but this one is actually doing pretty decent job you don't really have to change it that much there is another thing that gradient descent is going to calculate in order to say which neurons have to move how much and that is going to be the gradient descent of activation function we have different type of activation function that we already talked about. For example, if you remember about uh, ReLU and Leaky ReLU, they are going to act different. So for example, for our ReLU, very quickly, if this is going to be our activation function, if this is zero, and then all the values that are zero or negative, for example, negative five here, all of these values are gonna be zero, and then when we reach zero, we are zero. And then after that, um, all of the positive values are going to be exactly correspondent to what that positive value is. So like, for example, if we have one here, then this one is going to be one as well. So how this is going to be, how this is going to affect here is that this neuron right now is not seeing anything, is not seeing circle. So the value is either negative or zero. So the values that are negative or zero in ReLU is going to be turned off because they're going to return zero. When a number is multiplied by zero, it's going to be zero. So this neuron, it's going to be ignored. It's going to be turned off. ReLU says you're not giving any information about this, so you're just gonna be turned off. But um, this is going to be a problem because sometimes your neurons are in a position that so many of them might get turned off. So that is why ReLU is not going to be very useful here. In some cases, ReLU is not going to do very well, then you're going to use Leaky ReLU. Leaky ReLU is uh, similar to this, but instead of getting to zero, it's going to be a little bit lower than zero, and then it reaches zero. And then after that, it's going to be the same as here. Every, va every positive value is going to be the same on both axes. Okay, so what Leaky ReLU does, it says that, okay, so I'm not gonna turn you off just because you don't see where the circle is, but I'm going to limit your movement because you're not contributing anything. Now let's talk about a little bit about the math behind it, so derivative. So, 
when you're using gradient descent, you have to make sure that either your activation function or loss function, they have to be in a shape, they, they have to have some sort of mathematical shape that derivative can recognize them. And they totally make sense. Like for example, if I want to use something like a step function, uh, gradient descent is going to, it's not going to do well. And I'm gonna tell you why. So for example, here I have the value of two. So I'm gonna say all of these values are gonna be zero up to, up to when I reach two, and then right at, from there, every value is going to be one, okay? So I have a step function, I have a step function like this. This is going to suffer. If you want to use gradient, this is not gonna do well. Why is that? The, grad, the gradient is not defined for a 90 degree line. But why is that? Why can't we use this for gradient descent? Because technically, when you're taking two points at the same position, you're basically saying one neuron is at two different positions at the same time. And that is not possible. That is not defined. We can have, if I'm standing here, I can't also be standing there. I can't be in two places at the same time. But when you're doing something like a step function, you're trying to say that one of the neurons are at two different positions because you're getting two different losses for that neuron. And that neuron is just positioned in one place, so it just have one loss. It can't have two loss at the same point. And then other than that, uh, the derivative for the straight line is going to be zero. So there is no learning happening. That means that it doesn't matter how much you move these neurons, you're, you're not gonna get, your loss is not gonna get improved. <clears throat> That's why you have to be careful with what type of, what are you trying to achieve? Which neurons are you going to try to turn off? Are you trying to turn off this neuron or are you trying to get some information out of it so you're gonna use um, leaky or you just wanna turn it off for circle and you want that to be focused on square. So considering all of these together, so you always have to consider all of these options together and understand what um, each part does, understand how gradients behave. So based on that, you will choose the best option for your data.